Hi, welcome back to Frazzle Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzle Dad. And today I'm gonna show you this practice piece that I made. Um, and it's not a full up, uh, I did. I took this to about 80%, but I had some very specific things that I wanted to practice on. And I'll walk you through some of that. This is another piece that I got from the amazing uh, Patreon Buy Me A Coffee subscription from Once in a Six Side. I'll put a link there. Um, every month, he rounds up a number of great sculpts as part of a package for his community. It's a terrific community that's really targeted toward 3D printing, but there are some amazing painters over there. And it's just a lovely, chill community. So you ought to consider going over and uh, joining his Buy Me A Coffee. He's a tremendous resource for 3D printing of all ilks. All right, so with this one, um, you know, it's this deer guy in the forest. Uh, the, the base and the figure have tremendous, de tremendous detail. Yes. Um, and it really spoke to me as an opportunity to do some more practice of lighting and a slap chop approach with my airbrush using inks. I did something similar some months ago. Um, it was based off of a video that Ninjon did. And I liked the approach and I liked the effects I wanted to get. So I wanted to see what I could do with this piece. Also, there was something about that base and those funky little mushrooms as part of the base. They're just this really neat detail. And I thought to myself, self, why don't you make them weird, psychotic, eerie, glowing mushrooms and do some practice with OSL? And so that's really what I did. I didn't focus in on uh, detail of painting the figure. Um, again, this was like 80%. I wanted to work on the airbrush and then I wanted to really see what I could pull off with some OSL work. So there you have it. Let's get after it with some painting. Okay, I've laid down a primer and done a little bit of dry brushing. Nothing real heavy, but enough to just pick out some detail. And now at this point, I am laying down a bit of careful uh, brown base coat. I'm not hitting everything because there are going to be parts of, for example, that log that I want to be green. Uh, there's also some plant-like material on the ground, and I'll try to hit that with a green as well. Um, and then I'm also getting the figure, again, just with a base coat to start building up from there. starting to lay down some green, uh, not with acrylics, but with ink. It, I still haven't used them a whole lot, but I got to say, I'm really enjoying the scale color ink intensity uh, bottles that I've got. I was lucky enough to get a few from a friend who was selling a bunch of paint, and it was a pretty major score. They're just fun to work with. They are indeed very intense. I love the colors. They spray just brilliantly through uh, my airbrush. And uh, yeah, so they're they're fun to work with. And so the ink intensity green, as you can see, is quite dark, but I'm using that for sort of the floor or base color. And I'll lighten that up um, with some additional coloring on the top of that. I've moved on to a bit lighter, brighter green to add some detail and a little bit of highlighting here and just give a little bit of depth. Uh, this is Dr. Martin uh, Green Bombay ink, and this stuff also sprays well. Uh, really like using this stuff. And again, just using a brighter tone of green to give a little bit of additional depth here.
Okay, time to work on some undershading. I'm using violet and hitting that from the bottom, trying to aim up. And the point here is to give some darker undershading so that when I spray over the top with the brown, it'll look even darker. Um, and then also a bit of the mimic with what I'm gonna try to do for some of the glowy OSL stuff. Okay, you can see that I've got some brown acrylic on the horns and the staff. Uh, I didn't show that, but that was broken anvil brown. Now I'm using the brown ink to start to get some shading on the body. Uh, and at some point, I'll be hitting this with some of that sepia as well. But this is getting sort of that base brown ink over the slap chop highlight. wasn't sure how I wanted to handle kind of this cloak over his shoulders. I was hoping to do sort of a mottled green light from above, sort of like to give the impression of, you know, light coming through a forest. So I thought I'd experiment around with getting a yellow bit of cloak. Uh, so I'm using some yellow ink and giving that a bit of color and it, honestly just kind of experimenting because I didn't have a clear idea. As I was looking at this I decided I wanted to give even a little more highlight on here. So I'm coming in with a very light, very careful application of pure white. I don't think I've got any color other than white in the airbrush. So I'm just being very gentle and trying to hit only a few of the top pieces, the top aspects there. Time to get rolling with the fun part of the OSL. This is using pure white ink. Uh, I think I dialed my compressor up to like 35 pounds to try to get as smooth as possible. And I'm getting the base glow down. So hitting all of the little uh, mushrooms and then starting to hit some of the sort of splatter from the light um, around the various environmental parts there. to get some color on the base of that white here I'm using broken anvil violet number two and I've got it pretty well diluted so that it's coming out very light and very thin uh, and I'll just start layering this around the mushrooms around some of that splatter light effect uh, onto the you know the pieces around it the ground and that trunk um, I'll also be doing the same thing with the deer itself, but you're getting the idea here. Uh, as I go along, I'll start with the basic thinned white paint, not white paint, with a basic BAM violet. A bit later, I will add in some white paint and some white ink to further dilute that so I can get a bit of additional glow. Now it's time to start brightening things up even a bit more. I'm adding in fluorescent red and fluorescent blue 
to try to get that lovely violet color that I'm shooting for, the violet glow. Uh, I've seen some tips on from a number of people about mixing in fluorescence with some of the base color, and I wanted to give that a try. It was a good chance to experiment and fool around. Um, this is just futzing around with different mixtures, and um, I'm adjusting and playing around with this, but the result is getting some glow from the flor fluorescence while still holding that basic base color. I'm pretty pleased with how this was going on. Careful application, keep the paint fairly thin, and just practice around. So you'll notice there's a bit of a jump ahead here. The figure's actually mounted on the base, and when I did that at my work desk inside, I realized that I'd missed some critical areas with OFL, OSL uh, splash, like um, on the front of the figure. So came back out to the garage and now I'm working on catching that up. I'm hitting some of the inner thigh, uh, the staff, and a couple other little small parts. And that was really critical to help selling the effect. But again, you know, it's practice, it's adjusting, it's looking and tweaking things as needed. Now I'm coming back with just a bit of pure white ink and I've switched over to Vallejo's Game Color ink. Not for any reason other than I don't think I'd actually used it before and I wanted to experiment around with it. So I'm putting this on very, very gently uh, and it's just trying to accent some of the highlights of the globe. things here. First off, uh, I forgot to turn on one of my lights, so this is a bit dim. Secondly, I changed my camera angle and you're getting a nice shot of the bill of my hat. Oops. This is just final little bit of touch up again. You know, I didn't really, the point of this piece was not to hit all of the tiny awesome little details. It was practicing a couple other things, but I'm doing some work to pick out a little bit of texture on those beautiful horns. Uh, I'm hitting the staff with some additional color. I'm catching a couple of the details on the cloak. Um, and then there's like a cool belt and some other things. But that was really just kind of touching those with a bit of color to try to make a few things pop. Again, I wasn't worried about going all the way with this. The point of this was an 80% or so project. Um, but I did want to hit some of the cool things. All right, there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't already, kindly hit the thumbs up button for a like. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm a tiny channel. Every little subscriber helps, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, also, leave me a comment if you enjoyed this. What are you practicing on? How do you approach things that you want to get better at? So now, without further ado, here's the grand reveal. There you have it. Uh, 
I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun working on this. Some of that fun was because I was able to just sit back and remind myself that this was a practice piece and I didn't need to nail everything. What I needed to nail was my learning process. I'm very hard on myself. I always have been. And this piece, I was pretty happy with the outcome, particularly pulling off what I thought was a nice job with the eerie glow from uh, the purple glowing mushrooms. Anyway, until next time, be kind, go out, learn something, practice, have a good time. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Bye-bye, y'all.